Being a marketer is no sweat. You just have to manage dozens of channels, launch hundreds of campaigns, score thousands of leads, and... Okay, fine. It's a lot of sweat. Unless you have HubSpot's AI-powered marketing tools to help you do all that and more. Get started at HubSpot.com slash marketers. Money decisions don't have to be either or. With Bank of America, they can be yes and. Like yes to sunny vacations and rainy day funds. Can our digital tools and guidance help you create the future you want? Yes. And help you keep enjoying today, too. Do more with the bank that asks. What would you like the power to do? Explore our tips and more at bankofamerica.com slash yes and. Hello and welcome into the Birds of the Roundtable for yet another Victory Monday, I guess, uh, edition of the podcast. The Eagles coming off a blowout victory over the New Jersey Giants, 28-3, to their first win by more than eight points in 364 days. Guys, it was nice to just kind of kick back and relax in the fourth quarter. Uh, I, my name is Shane Half. I'm your host of the show. You can follow me on Twitter at Shane Half NFL. Joined by Dives, give him a follow on Twitter at Mr. Crockpot. Dives, how are you doing tonight? That's the take, right? Being able to watch an Eagles game, being able to enjoy it, not have your blood pressure spiked uh, to God knows what. Um, it, Eagles football was fun Sunday, and that's something we haven't said in a long time. Absolutely. Also joined by David, give him a follow on Twitter at PHL Eagle News. David, how are you doing? Doing great. Uh, also, the Eagles starters and the Giants starters got to watch the game in the fourth quarter too, because <laughs> none of them played. But yeah, that was that was fun to have a have a blowout victory. It, it felt like twenty twenty two for a week there. Yeah, absolutely. Got a comment already coming in. Cooked by Stan on Twitter says he's expecting a shootout in Week Eight. We will get into it. Uh, Ryan is not able to join us today. He is traveling for work this week, and so it's just the three of us. Uh, but all of the Ryan fans in the chat, stay tuned in. Hopefully we can pick up a little bit of the slack, fill a little of the void left by Ryan's absence. Um, we're going to follow. He, he probably missed the most optimistic, positive show of the year. So <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's just sad. Yeah, that's true. Uh, hopefully we can just keep the party rolling next week for uh, Birds of the Round Table as well. But uh, let's dive into it, guys. Uh, we will go offensive takeaways first. Uh, Dives, I'll throw it to you. What was your offensive takeaway in this game? Oh, um, I'll let you guys go with the the layup. Uh, let's talk Jalen Hurts. I thought, um, you know, I've been very critical on Jalen Hurts, and uh, I thought it was a very solid game from him. Yeah, there, it's not perfect. Yeah, he tends to hold the ball. For too long, you know, he tends to kind of play too much hero ball. Took a couple early sacks, but after that, he was efficient. I thought he was smart. Did not turn over the football for the second consecutive game. Zero turnover-worthy plays the last two weeks. Just so huge for this offense, which is where games are won and lost. And, you know, that's – that, that's what my takeaway was. I thought there are still glimpses of a very good offense within um, what we've seen through seven weeks. It's pretty, it's pretty evident. Short, quick passes. Less is more with Jalen Hurts. Simplify the offense. More mesh. More crossers. You know, you don't have to run vertical routes every single third and short or God knows what. You know, back, you know, let Saquon Barkley be the engine of this offense. There were some nice RPO plays on Sunday as well that we haven't seen, um, especially with that one throw to um, A.J. Brown in the middle of the field. There was an RPO that uh, led to Saquon Barkley going down the sideline. So for me, there's a lot of positives, and I'm going with my theme from the postgame show, good vibes only. This is, a, this is a fun Monday. We'll get into my concerns about Joe Burrow against this Eagles defense in a bit. But for now, good vibes only. 
Good vibes only and zero turnover worthy plays only as well for the second week in a row. So uh, we will certainly take that. Uh, David, what was your offensive takeaway in this one? I mean, aside from what Dive said, um, the offensive line going out the way it did, um, Makai Becton having to leave with a concussion, Tyler Steen filled in really, really well. Fred Johnson was very, very good in this game. I, I have only watched like two thirds of the all 22 so far, and it has been very, very impressive. I mean, he was great, but the star of the game was Saquon Barkley, man. He started his day at the stadium by seeing his jersey set on fire, and then he ended it by smoking his former team. It was pretty impressive. Um, he finished off runs in an angry fashion, especially that one on the sideline where he just bowls over the guy. Um, he had three explosive running plays of 55, 41, and 38 yards. Per next-gen stats, he hit a top speed of 21.93 miles per hour on that 55-yard run. So when players say it's just business, well, sometimes it's personal, too, because he got a little extra there uh, for this game. But just as impressively as everything he did on the field was – he was 13 yards away from tying yeah. and besting his career record um, there. And I'm glad the Eagles showed that clip of him and Sirianni discussing it because it just shows how unselfish he is to sit, protect his body with such a big lead. And like he stated, letting the other players eat. I thought that was very, very impressive, man. It goes a long way towards building relationships with other players on the team and just preserving his body for the more important playoff run down the road. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I posted out his uh, per next gen stats. He had 92 rushing yards over expectation in that wow. game. Uh, that's more than the season total for wow. all but six other NFL running backs in one <laughs> game. So, yeah, a uh, heck of a Saquon Barkley game. And, you know, it wasn't just the wasn't just the big runs. He had over a 50 percent success rate on rushing calls. He had point five three EPA per carry. Um, it was a great day for him. You know, Cam Jurgens is just a joy to watch in the running game. Uh, him lead blocking on that 55 yarder. He sends a guy flying that actually the guy ends up uh, being the one that runs down Saquon. So maybe Cam Jurgens shouldn't have hit him so hard because he <laughs> propelled him down the field. Uh, but yeah, it, it was a great performance by the rushing attack. And it's nice to be able to come in against a team that they had a good defense. Like, they have a good rushing defense. They were top 10 in both DVOA and EPA rushing defense coming into this game. And with two offensive linemen out uh, to be able to come in and just run the ball that way is really, it's key. And like Dive said, it's a bit of a flashback to 2022 when you could just control games and you could just dominate teams in the trenches. Uh, it, it was a fun game to see. So and let's flip it. Oh, go ahead, David. Before we move off the offense, I'd just like to mention A.J. Brown, too. I, I saw a stat earlier that he's been thrown 16 catchable targets so far this season, and he's caught all 16 of them for 325 yards, three touchdowns. And Jalen Hurts has a 158.3 perfect passer rating when targeting A.J. Brown. It just goes to show the difference that guy makes when he steps foot on the right. field, man. It's unbelievable. Yeah. That is crazy. I wonder what his – I'm going to look it up now. I want to see what his contested catch rate is. Um, he has uh, five contested catches this year. That's crazy. Five contested catches already. So uh, all around really good performance by the offense. All around really good performance by the defense, who all of a sudden has, uh, has more sacks than points allowed in the last two games. They have not allowed a defensive touchdown. Uh by the time they play the Bengals, it'll have been 27 days since an opposing offense put up a touchdown on the Eagles. Now, there's some cherry picking there because there's a bye week in there too. But still, we don't have to tell people that when we tweet it out. Uh, David, what was your defensive takeaway in this one? I, I mentioned it last week, and I think it's a theme that rolled over to this week was Fangio listening to his players, learning how to put them in the best position possible, putting the best players on the field like Cooper DeGene, um, and it's just benefiting everybody. I mean, Bryce Huff with his hand in the dirt is just a completely different player. Um, he had a second quarter sack while running through being held. He had two additional QB hits in this game. He had a TFL. Um, since the bye week, man, he's just looked like a different player. Nolan Smith had two tackles for losses, another sack, which gives him sacks in back-to-back -back weeks. 
Uh, I think he finished the game with a little bit over a 21% pressure rate, which is just unbelievable. Um, he's also playing the run very well. Josh Sweat starting to get hot. He had a first quarter sack, um, a TFL, even added a pass defense somewhere along the way. I, I saw the stat, but I don't remember watching the play. Um, Jalen Carter joined in the fun with the, his fifth sack of the day. So eight sacks, six different players. Um, Nicobe Dean with a great sack. He went right over the center, didn't fall for the play action. Um, just just a remarkable day by by the defense and pressuring the quarterback all day. And Dean also had like four quarterback hits as well. So just just the pressure with without having to blitz as much as, you know, everybody wants them to it was just very impressive. And again, I will caveat that with sacks normally come when you when you see them come in this fashion, you can look no further than the quarterback they're playing because that's normally the, as just as big as a statistic as the sacks. But it's impressive nonetheless because they played some inferior QBs and they didn't have this kind of output. So it was a great step forward. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was a dominant performance. I think it was the best EPA per drive performance by the Eagles defense since like 2021. Um, it's been a long, like it can, it can be a bad opponent, but it can still be a dominant defensive performance. And well said. like I said, yeah. I mean, we haven't seen that in a long time. It's been a year since the Eagles won by more than a possession. So, oh, and uh, I forgot big Pimpin, Jalex Hunt with, with his strip sack, which was just unbelievable, man. Yeah. That's his first recorded NFL statistic. And it's a strip sack. I, I really wish they would have recovered that, but. That would have been great. Uh, Dives, what was your defensive takeaway in this one? Yeah, just piggybacking off of what David said. I was just really impressed with Fangio in general. You know, I thought there was great communication across the board. Not a lot of coverage busts. The tackling was pretty solid. There was a lot of uh, more discipline. We saw um, for, I think, the second straight week, our defensive backs are playing a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage. Um, it was awesome to see the Eagles, you know, not give up easy yards. They were fighting and contesting short passes, which was really nice, especially from Quinion. And that's my take is Quinion Mitchell is a star. Um, he uh, went up, not a lot, but, you know, Malik Neighbors has been lighting up the league uh, for the Giants and him and Darius Slay just shut him down completely. And I'm just every single week, I'm just blown away by Quinion and the maturity we see from him on the field. He allowed two catches on four targets for 15 total yards. Terrific. And then you go to Cooper DeGene, who I thought was also very sound. The, the boost this guy gives you uh, in run defense is terrific. We didn't really get to see that many blitzes from him like we did against the Browns, but I'm I'm okay with that. That was kind of Nicobe's Dean, Nicobe Dean's turn to kind of be that weapon. And man, Nicobe Dean looked the fast, the fastest I've ever seen him look on a football field in an Eagles uniform. That early blitz he had uh, with the sack was clean as hell, and um, I just love the way Fangio utilized uh, Nicobe Dean. Uh, you know, get him downhill. You know, get this guy as a run defender. Get this guy as a blitzer. Showed a lot of juice as a blitzer. Still not great in coverage. He's still going to miss some tackles, but he's in. He's young. He needs to be on the field. He needs those reps. So um, top to bottom, all three levels, I was really impressed. Yeah. Um, what My favorite statistic from this game is that the Eagles defensive backs combined for 16 tackles and zero missed tackles. Um, and – that kind of goes back to the point that Johnny said on the post game show a couple of weeks ago that guys don't just suddenly forget how to tackle one week and then have a good week of practice. And all of a sudden we're tackling good again. A lot of it has to do with the cushion with which you're playing and the, the cornerbacks have been up on the line of scrimmage more. We're not running a ton of press coverage, but they're playing tighter to receivers and to routes and it's making a difference. Um, my fa my second favorite statistic from this game is, uh, Cooper DeGene allowed three catches in this game. How many yards do you think he gave up? Three. Yeah. <laughs> three catches for three yards. I, uh, I, did, I did the all 22 right before I came on here, man. Uh, he, dude, Cooper is such a weapon, man. He is such a weapon. Yeah, absolutely. So it was a fun defensive. And again, it's worth mentioning. It's a really bad opponent missing their best offensive lineman. 
But Malik Neighbors, the Eagles held him to his lowest catch total and his lowest uh, yardage output. And I haven't got to watch the All-22 yet. I want to go back and see how they did it, but kind of what they did to him. But, um, you know, it's fun to hold a guy like that because he's a budding star if he can keep his head on straight. And, of course, I, I tweeted out a clip where they asked him what the Eagles did defensively, and he was just like, I was open, man. Check the tape. And so uh, he's not endearing himself to his quarterback or his offensive lineman probably, but uh, maybe he'll pick that up as he goes along. So uh, let's keep going here with our player of the games. Dives, I'll throw it to you first. Give me your player of the game. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah, I'll I'll take the layup this time. It's absolutely a 1,000% Saquon Barkley. And uh, the ferocity and the physicality, that that guy was running with trucking people every now and then that was sensational. Um, he's on pace for what, like nearly 1700 yards um, this season. It's gotta be Saquon. And there were some plays left on the field that he could even had more yards and, you know, let alone be out the entire fourth quarter. So for me, Saquon, Saquon, it's Saquon. <laughs> All right, David, who do you have for player of the game in this one? It's definitely Saquon, but I'll go over to the defensive side to be different, um, and I'm going to take N'Kobe Dean. He finished the game with four quarterback hits, two sacks, two tackles for loss. He also led the defense in tackles for the second week in a row with 11. Um, I think his actions on the field are beginning to match his talent that he's had all along, so I'm pretty excited for him. But I would like to mention one more guy before we move on, and that is the Eagles' first fullback that they've had in 15 years, <laughs> Ben Van Sumrin. Um, he had two very nice blocks as lead fullback to spring runs by Barkley and Gainwell in this game. Um, he played five offensive snaps. It was kind of funny to see, but he actually did it pretty well. He did spring both runs, so that was pretty impressive. So shout out to Ben Van Summer and fullback slash linebacker. David, yeah. can you imagine uh, Tyler Warren playing that role next no. season? <laughs> that would be fantastic. Can you imagine like a six-five guy just r- running in front of – Saquon Barkley. Oh my God. No, but I hope we see it in about nine months, but no. (laughs) no. All right. right. I will give my player of the game then to AJ Brown, that touchdown catch on the fourth down in contested coverage uh, early in the game. It puts the Eagles on the board, um, breaks the tie. They never trailed from that point on. Uh, It's nice to have a guy that you can just throw those balls up to. And he's been so good this year. Um, he had, he ran another really nice dig route that Jalen Hurts hit him on. So on a day where there wasn't a lot of passing production, every bit of it ran through A.J. Brown. Uh, and so I'll give it to him. So Okay, let's turn the page now. And we're going to talk about this Cincinnati Bengals game. And we're going to give you our top matchups to watch and some general thoughts on the game before we make our picks of the week. Uh, David, I'll throw it to you first. Uh, What do you have as your matchup to watch in this one? I went with Jalen Hurts versus the Bengals defense. Um, They're ranked 30th in expected points allowed per play. They're 27th versus the run, so we might see a game plan very similar to the one they did with uh, the New York Giants. They're 26th versus third down, 25th in defending the red zone, and 23rd overall. But they do have the 14th uh, best pass defense. They're giving up... 210 yards per game average, and they've allowed 10 passing touchdowns this season. But the Eagles have started off slow, as we all know. It's been six weeks with no first quarter points. So I, I want to see them get into a rhythm early in the game. I don't want to see three and out to start the game. I don't want to see them struggling to get points in the first 15 minutes. I, I want I want to see him take a lead. I want to see him have some plays, some slants, anything to get him in a rhythm instead of four verticals to start the game off. Let's do let's have a swing pass out to Saquon. Let's, you know, do something to to get him in a rhythm and to get him moving because the the Bengals defense again, they're they're not great, but but they're, you know, middle of the pack as far as pass defense. So it, it will be a little challenge for him, and I, and I would love to see him get going. I'd also like to see Devontae Smith involve some. He's been sparingly used since coming back from the concussion. He only had one catch for actually negative two yards uh, this past week. So I'd like to see him get involved as well. All right. Uh, Dives, what about you? What's your top matchup to watch here? The red zone numbers, David just said, were interesting because I thought like one of the difference, differences – uh, yesterday 
was the Eagles being perfect with their red zone offense. And they were, I mean, tied with the Giants heading into last week as like what, like fourth worst in the mm-hmm. NFL. So that's that's interesting. Uh, for me, it's got to be the Eagles defensive backs versus the Bengals wide receivers. Um, obviously, uh, Jamar Chase is Jamar Chase. He's a flat out star. Then you get to T. Higgins, a guy that's just physically dominant. Um, he had 82 yards against Cleveland last week on four receptions. And that's the uh, um, fourth. This is the fourth straight week that T. Higgins has led the Bengals in targets. So, um, and also his third straight game of 75 plus receiving yards. So, Higgins and Chase, when they're healthy, man, you're looking at uh, kind of like the Eagles, like one of the top receiving duos in football. And um, they're going up against Darius Slay and Quinnon Mitchell, uh, who last week against the Giants were targeted 10 times, only allowed four receptions, 40 yards, and a rating of 47.9. I'm really fascinated with how Q and Darius Slay, who I think people are being too critical on as well. Um, I think D Slay has been fine. Uh, I had a a few big plays again on Sunday. Um, But anyway, um, long story short, that that battle is going to be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, just to piggyback a little bit on the whole Joe Burrow thing. Um, I feel like the Bengals run an offense that's really similar to what the Buccaneers do. It's a lot of quick time to throw, ball out underneath to good receivers. Uh, Joe Burrow has a time to throw of 2.72 seconds this season uh, with an average depth of target of 7.1 yards, both of which are in like the bottom third or the top however you look however you want to look at it bottom third top third he's throwing in like the third of quarterbacks that throw out the shortest and the fastest so the ball's coming out underneath um in the Buccaneers game we saw Baker Mayfield just pick that apart and the Eagles played so passively and we've seen the Eagles play tighter to receivers now did they do that because they finally figured out hey we kind of need to do this or did they do that because they were playing two really bad quarterbacks they weren't scared of, and now we're just going to go back to being passive? But uh, Joe Burrow has 0.21 EPA per dropback and completes 77.7% of his passes on throws under two and a half seconds. When you go to throws over two and a half seconds, his turnover worthy play rate almost doubles. Uh, his EPA swings to a negative number. And he's taken 18 sacks and been pressured 57 times on 123 dropbacks. So you can get after him if you can make him hang on to the ball. And they utilize short dropbacks at the highest rate in the league. They have the second highest success rate doing so. And the Bengals are just a confusing team. Um, Like their defense was garbage and their offense was awesome the first five weeks of the year. They were third in EPA per play offensively and 30th defensively uh they scored 28 points per game the first five weeks of the season but they went one and four because the defense gave up 29 points per game in the last two weeks it seems like they've turned a corner now the defense went from 30th to 11th in epa per play but the offense went from third to 21st they've (laughs) only given yeah they've only given up 10 and a half (laughs) points per game but the offense has only scored 19 a game and it was against the They've got the same two last opponents, the Giants and the Browns. And so, you know, their defense has looked really good the last two weeks. The Eagles' defense has looked really good the last two weeks. Is it just a mirage from playing the Giants and playing the Browns? I don't know. We're going to have to see uh, on Sunday. But the Bengals are a really confusing team that it's hard to put a finger on. Like, they could come in and put up 30 points and still lose they could come in and score 13 points and win. You really just, I don't know what you're going to get with this team. So, um, it sounds like you're describing the Philadelphia Eagles <laughs> for, yeah. until last week. We haven't seen consistent play for four quarters, let alone both sides of the football. Yeah. It's like, they have not been able to, they haven't been able to play complimentary football with their offense and defense. It just hasn't happened. And so, uh, they're also going to play a lot of single high coverage. They play a lot of cover one and cover three. And so they're going to stack the box, which is interesting. They're so bad as a run defense. I haven't gone into the all 22 on them yet, but I don't know why they're so bad in run defense because they stack the box. And so 
it's kind of a pick your poison. Do you want to stack the box to try to stop Saquon and maybe still not be able to do it? Are you going to give up those one-on-ones to AJ Brown? We'll see how they decide to handle that. So um, any other thoughts on the game from you guys, uh, random things on the Bengals before we get into our picks? My, my, my only thought is, is Quinion, just like Dodds was saying, it is so awesome to have a guy back there and, and, and he's a rookie and it's just unbelievable that you just don't have to worry about. He's allowed 197 yards this year, but only 42 yards after the catch. I called him a yak killer all during college last year, and he just extends that straight to the NFL. He hasn't allowed a touchdown this season. He's only missed two tackles. He's played 97% of the snaps. It's it's just unbelievable. It's like a 48% completion rate he's allowed. It, it's just so nice to have a guy back there like that. And like also like Dive said about Slay, Slay matched Quinion's. I think he only allowed two catches for 15 yards on Sunday as well. I mean, it, it has just been a just complete and utter difference in what we saw. And I'm not trying to bash Bradbury or anybody else, but it's just so different than what we witnessed last year back there. And then you throw in Cooper DeGene taking over for Avanti Maddox. It has just been a complete overhaul back there in the, in the secondary. And it, and it just shows week in and week out, even when they're struggling everywhere else, they're not struggling back there with those two guys. Yeah. Uh, Dives, were you going to say something too? Um, my my take on like D Slay and Q is like, I know there's been more targets to Quinion, and I feel like every single game, quarterbacks start to target Quinion at least to begin with, and then they realize that they can't, <laughs> and then it's it's like just a I don't know maybe that's just my it's my gut feeling is that you know they they throw away from D- Darius Slay and then. They'll, they'll try and target Q early, and it, it, there's just no success. Downfield, short. I mean, how about the, the, he – Q took some people out on Sunday with a couple of hits. The, the one looked like – made him look like Brian Dawkins. Uh, he, he, he's awesome. He just needs to learn how to catch a football. And once he does, <laughs> we're, we're going to be – we're going to be good. I, I do want to add uh, one little thing about the Bengals O-line. It's another O-line that's definitely – banged up um um what's his name orlando brown jr hurt his calf during sunday's uh win uh keep an eye on that um it's not like a long-term injury but he could be out that he's their left tackle and then they've already um have trent brown out for the year he, he was their starting right tackle so you could see cody ford come in and play left tackle and then they're kind of like screwed in terms of depth uh so keep an eye on the Bengals o-line yeah uh, on your point about targeting quinion early and then they stop if i was a quarterback wanting to settle into a rhythm i would target quinion's side early in the game because i know at least if i mess up it's not going to be an interception <laughs> so, <laughs> man i love that guy one of these days he's going to catch one and i'm going to come out of my chair for it but people are driven by the search for better But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search. Match. With Indeed. The hiring process can be slow and overwhelming. Simplify hiring with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform. With over 350 million global monthly visitors according to Indeed data. And a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash P-O-D-K-A-T-Z 13. That's Indeed.com slash P-O-D-K-A-T-Z 13. Terms and conditions apply. All right, let's get into our picks then. Uh, We're going to give you our player of the game prediction, score predictions, our over and some over under picks as well. Uh, Do we have our updated totals from, let's see, we got it on the screen here. Yep. And, Uh, ooh, it's close. Uh, Rob's got 28 after a three point week, Dives has 27 after a five point week. Uh, I have 25 after a six point week and then David and Ryan are tied at 24. So, uh, we're all right in there. Uh, now hold on. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we all correctly picked the Eagles last week. So. Yep. yep. All right. Well, let's jump into it here. Um, now, player of the game is the only. It's the only one with a caveat. We don't score this one because we don't pick duplicates. We want to just talk about different guys that might have good games. But Dives, I'll throw it to you. Who's your player of the game prediction? I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna. Last week I, I I was playing chess. This week I'm gonna play checkers. Give me Saquon Barkley. All right, David. Who do you have? I'm going with AJ Brown. All right. Well, I guess I'll take Jalen Hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted AJ Brown, but I should have thrown to myself second, I guess. So, <laughs> okay, uh, Dives, give me your score prediction. Who do you think wins this game, and by how much? I think it's going to be a close game. I do think the Bengals win this one. Um, until I am proven otherwise, I still am very much concerned about the Eagles' defense against uh, a Bengals team that can spread you. Uh, so give me the Bengals getting the W score prediction. I'll go. I think this is going to be a somewhat high scoring affair. Give me 30 to 20 Bengals. All right. I am going to take the Eagles winning 28, 24. I similarly think it'll be kind of a high scoring game, but I think the Eagles are able to pull this one out. Uh, David, what about you? I got the Eagles winning 27 to 16. So I guess I'm the only under. All right. So All right. yeah, that puts David under the 47 and a half point uh, total. It puts dives and I over. We'll get Ryan's picks later so he can't cheat and change them on us. But <laughs> uh, let's go over under Jalen Hurts total turnovers at a half a turnover. Dives, what do you got? Two straight weeks of zero turnover worthy plays. Um, again, the theme is good vibes only. Give me the under. All right. I will also take the under. I'll take the under on this one. I feel like we keep it going. I also just generally don't think the Bengals defense is that good. Under. All right. So we're all picking Jalen Hurts. Turnover free for the third week in a row. Uh, over under Joe Burrow passing yards. Uh, the line is set at 199.5. Uh, David, I'll throw it to you first this time. Let's go reverse order. What do you have? I'm going with the under. Wow. All right. I am not going with the under. Uh, give me the over. Uh, last week was the first time he's been under 200 yards since week one. Uh, I think that I think he'll he'll have some success against the Eagles defense. So if I'm picking a high scoring game, I got to pick Burrow over. Uh, Dives, what about you? Yeah, over easily. Okay, uh, AJ Brown or Jamar Chase, who has more receiving yards? Uh, David, what do you got? AJ, if he's my player of the game. I got to go with the over there, over Jamar. Fair. Uh, well, Jalen Hurts is my player of the game, so I guess I got to go AJ Brown too. But uh, Jamar Chase <laughs> has not been over 75 yards in either of the last two games. So I think given that the Bengals play a lot of single high, you're going to see some of those shots to AJ. And like we mentioned earlier, he just seems to reel those in almost every time. So give me AJ. Uh, Dives, what about you? Yeah, it's going to be close, but I'm going AJ Brown. I, I think, you know, T. Higgins is, has been getting more of the target. So give me AJ. All right. Uh, Jalen Hurts versus Joe Burrow. Who has more total touchdowns, Dives? Oof. I'm going to go. David, you go first. I'm going Jalen Hurts. I mean, I can't pick him to win with 27 points and only have the Bengals with 16 and go with Burrow. So taking Jalen Hurts. All right. Uh, Dives, have you had time to make your selection now? He had three last week. How many did Joe have last week? Do we know off the top? Uh, probably it was either two or three because they only scored three touchdowns. Yeah. He threw two touchdowns last week. Zero the week before. I'll go Joe Burrow. All right. I'm going to take Jalen Hurts. It's hard. It's hard for me to pick against Hurts in a category like this if I expect the game to be close just because of the tush push. So yep. uh, I'll, I'll take Hurts. If it was passing, I'm easily taking Burrow here. Yep. Um, over under total sacks for the Eagles at three and a half. Uh, I'll go first this time. Give me the under. Uh, Burrow's only been sacked four or more times once this season. Um, I think. 
I, I just don't think he's going to let the Eagles wreck the game in that way. Dives, what about you? I, I'm right there with you. Um, expect him to get the ball off fast, negate the defensive line. Um, it's not. This isn't Daniel Jones and Deshaun. So give me the under. All right, David. What about you? I agree. Like I mentioned earlier, I think sacks are almost just as much a QB stat as it is a defensive line stat. So he'll get rid of the ball quick. All right. And our final one over under Saquon Barkley rushing yards, 119 and a half. Uh, Dives, he was your player of the game prediction. I'm assuming you're taking the over. Give me the over, baby. All right. I will also take the over. The Bengals are allowing 136 rushing yards per game. Uh, right now so bottom third of the league somehow despite playing a lot of single high I think Saquon Barkley will be good to go again he got that fourth quarter rest coming off a light workload game Uh, give me the over David what about you you took the words out of my mouth they're a porous defense versus the run I'll take Saquon over all right so there you have it our picks we'll make sure Ryan fills his out before maybe we just don't give Ryan any points (laughs) now we'll make sure Ryan gets his filled out uh before the game so we won't let him cheat us uh so that's gonna about do it for our preview and our picks guys before we got it out of here any random thoughts you need to any random takes you need to fire off little tidbits that got left on the cutting room floor anything you got to say about this game the eagles are 2-0 no. with bald sirianni I mean, yeah. that's a good it's a good stat there you go 2-0 and with bald <laughs> sirianni no no I, I think we covered it pretty well All right. Well, let's get out of here then, guys. Uh, Final thoughts. Uh, Dibes, you're up first here. Tell the people where they can find you. Tell them what you got going on. The floor is yours. Uh, Find me uh, on X at Mr. Crockpot. Uh, We are going live um, with a special guest, Philly Film Room, uh, talking more Eagles versus um, Giants and Eagles versus Bengals. So uh, join us. Uh, We're going live in about 10 minutes. So we'll see you over there. With Nick? Is that Nick? No, it's Eric. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Good stuff. Uh, yeah. Those are guys are great follows. Be sure you check out their YouTube okay. channel as well at Philly Film Room. Uh, David, what about you? Plug your stuff, man. Tell the people where they can find you. Find me on X at PHL Eagle News. Um, everything I write for Philly Sports Network and Metro Philly Newspaper is there. And I'd also like to mention Jalen Hurts with his um, rushing touchdown versus the Giants moved into third place in the history of the NFL for quarterback rushing touchdowns. Um, I don't, I, I, I think, I think going into second to ways away, like I think he might be like 20 away from second place, but he did move into third place with that. So that's pretty impressive for a guy. What is he four years in the league as a starter here? And um, he, he's already rushed more touchdowns than only two other quarterbacks in the history of the NFL. Pretty impressive stuff. Yeah. Great. I think, He's got a. I, I wasn't he right there with two, and he's a long ways from three. Yeah, I I know. Yeah, whoever's one, it might be Cam Newton. It's like yeah, Cam is one. I was trying to find substantially the stat higher. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, uh, I of course I can't find it now. Career leaders for rushing touchdowns. Oh, mm. that's just playoffs. Uh, okay, yeah, he's got 43, which tied Steve Young. Josh Allen is second at 55. Cam Newton is first at 75. So, and I uh, think his he got two in this game. I think that pushed him to 45. To, to okay, move that. Steve the Young. winky might not be updated, but yeah, uh, I would also like to point out that Jalen Hurts with his two touchdowns has now more scored more touchdowns in MetLife this season than the New York Giants. So, <laughs> um, that's an but, even better stat. That's great. Yeah, I, I really wish Saquon got that second mm-hmm. touchdown so we could have said that stat about Saquon. I guess we can say he's scored as many touchdowns in MetLife as the Giants. But that's going to do it. You guys, be sure you're following these guys. Dives is at Mr. Crockpot on Twitter. David is at PHL Eagle News. You can follow Ryan as well at Philly Sports PSA. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the Eagles Pin Pull Podcast Network. You get this show and seven other long-form shows as well as a weekly or a daily morning show that's like 10 minutes, a quick hitter from Phil. So be sure you're following all of that stuff. Thank you guys for joining in live here on Birds of the Roundtable. We'll be back on Tuesday night next week in our normal time slot. We'll have Ryan back. We're going to be celebrating a third straight win. It's going to be great. Hopefully we'll see you guys there. Until then, go Birds.